Welcome to Startup Dugout by Dell Technologies, a podcast series where we talk to industry leaders from India's biggest tech startups to go back to that time when, that time when you needed allies, that time when you needed sound advice and good mentors, that time when you were looking for the right tech partners who can accelerate growth. I'm Sairi Chahal, your host for the series. I'm a serial entrepreneur, angel investor, and evangelist for women's internet. I currently run Shiro's and Mahila Money to create internet ecosystems for women, helping them with employment, entrepreneurship, and access to capital. Join us as we discover how these leading entrepreneurs didn't back down in the face of adversity and grew their startups from the germ of an idea to a successful business. We learn how initiatives like Dell for Startups empower companies through innovative technology, strategic guidance, proven practical capabilities, and expert consulting assistance. This week on Startup Dugout by Dell Technologies, I speak with VR Govindrajan, the co-founder and director of Perfios, a Bangalore-based fintech startup. Perfios offers a software technology platform to financial institutions to help them improve credit assessment by extracting, aggregating, and analyzing financial data. Initially started as a personal finance management firm, Perfios now helps financial institutions create reports and monitor fraud. An entrepreneur with 35 years of experience in the IT industry and an avid participant in database technology and AI communities, Mr. Govindrajan developed Perfios in 2008, along with his co-founder Debashish Chakraborty. I talked to Mr. Govindrajan about the genesis of Perfios, the challenges of selling a product that has yet not existed, and the move from B2C to B2B. I'm going to jump right into into the heart of you know your entrepreneurship journey and talk about genesis of Perfios and um, and of course your relationship with personal finance. Uh, you you obviously have covered covered a long mile here. So you know walk us through some of some of that. See Perfios, uh, I, I don't know how many knows about it. The name of the company is Personal Finance One Stop Perfios. Uh, that's how we started. So personal finance is very dear to my heart. And uh, the reason my co-founder, the Bashish Dichak, we call him, and me, started the company was we were looking for a solution to manage our personal finances that can help uh, people like you and me to manage all our asset classes and do it in an automated way. And uh, this was around 2008-9 time frame. And there was no solution available, uh, definitely not in the Indian market which is true even today, uh, that space is still open. Uh, so we said being uh, hardcore technical folks, we said instead of putting together PowerPoints and trying to raise money for this, let's go and build it. Uh, so in about three to four months, we had an initial prototype where we were able to pull data from uh, multiple data sources and all that. So we built a solution and uh, it looked very good. It solved our pain point of uh, managing personal finances. So that's how the whole company started building this uh, extensible data platform that could aggregate data from multiple data sources and then uh, for a specific solution, which in this case was personal finance. That's how we started. Wonderful. I think uh, entrepreneurs are great at spotting opportunities right in their backyard and building for them. Super inspiring. And of course, I think, uh, you know, it. India has come a long, long way from from that little gem of an idea to to of course being being the hub of fintech innovation where we are. Uh, but at the same time, I think I relate to this a lot. Where I've been a founder uh, for a long time, and I think uh, India is a tough market to crack still, in spite of how large we are and monetize con- monetization continues to be a challenge. I'd love to hear a little bit about the initial challenges of monetization and consumer and uh, and the switch to B2B and you know how did that shift go? It's a great question. I'm just going back in time. <laughs> uh, so we built this solution and uh, like any entrepreneur, we thought uh, it's the best invention after a slice of bread. 
and we thought we built this fantastic platform and uh, people will now come flocking to start using this and we don't need to work after this, right? So obviously completely wrong. Uh, so we rolled out this platform, took it to uh, the market and that's when we realized it's so difficult to make money, especially on the internet. So this was a personal finance solution on the internet uh, for end users like you and me. And unfortunately, all of us, that includes me, all of us want everything free on the internet. Uh, they don't realize they are the product, but they want every product to be free, right? So when we rolled it out, uh, we offered it in a freemium model. So the base version was free and uh, there were some value added version on top, hardly at 500 rupees or 1500 rupees uh, per year subscription, but nobody was willing to pay for that. And uh, the conversion that we had, that is, uh, free users to paid users was about 4%. The consolation was that was the global standard. 4% conversion was decent, but that was not enough to kind of generate the revenue we wanted to build a large scale company. And also that meant that we had to continuously attract free users to the system to keep converting them to being paid users. That's when we understood there is a famous dictum in this uh, FinTech slash freemium world. If you want to make billions in freemium, you have to spend billions. And uh, that's not something that either we were capable of or uh, wanted to do. So, so it was a challenge and we tried uh, repositioning the product instead of end users. We said, can we work with chartered accountants? Can we work with independent financial advisors? Can we work with wealth managers? So every flip that we did, we, we were getting some initial money, but it was not uh, big enough for us to build a large scale business, right? And our goal was to build a very large brand based on this technology. Uh, because my earlier company that I had run, I had taken it public and ran it as a public company for eight years plus. So here the goal was to build a much bigger company than that. So we were not willing to settle for a lifestyle business. So after three, four years of struggle with all of this, and unfortunately because our earlier ventures were successful, we at least had the financial security to go through all this uh, variations and repositioning and all that. Otherwise it would have been like the 95% of the companies that fold up within the first one or two years, right? Fortunately we had that uh, financial security. So then we said uh, uh, we don't seem to do too well in the B2C market. It's not in our DNA. So instead of that, why don't we leverage the same platform and then take it to the B2B and start interacting uh, with banks and financial institutions. And uh, that's how we kind of flip to the B2B model. Wonderful. And clearly, rest is history, right? And uh, uh, I, I, No, I won't say it is history because it is still a lot of challenges. It's still <laughs> building this out. But no, I think uh, super inspiring still. I'd love to hear a little more about your previous venture. You said you're taking a public a company public. Right, could, you, right. could you talk a little bit uh, about that? Yeah. Uh, so this was a company called Aztec Software. I was a co-founder. We started in mid 90s and there also the idea was to build a large scale product company based on technology and uh, after two three years we realized sitting out of uh, this was again mid 90s at that time we had to start our pitches to our uh, prospective customers in the US saying where is India right <laughs> that's the kind of thing we had to do so it was a difficult thing building product sitting out of India and marketing it in the US so we did the next best thing what is today called as outsourced product development OPD we were the pioneers in that space uh, so we did the next best thing of developing products for all software companies in the world all the big companies uh, they used to work with us and we were building products sitting out of Bangalore really high-end work and that really took off and then uh, we got listed around 2000, I think, in uh, BSC and ran it as a public company before selling Aztec software to Mindtree. That's when I started uh, Perfuse. Wonderful. So clearly playing to your strengths in the B2B space and uh, B2B. obviously exactly. software uh, sounds, sounds perfect. And of course, uh, uh, very excited to see how, you know, how it grows in the future. And of course, my next question is a little bit around execution and I, I mean, we all know ideas are plenty, plenty and execution is a hard road for all founders. And uh, we know Perfuse has been uh, supported by trusted technology provider like Dell from your early journey until it's grown into a unicorn. Right. And I'm sure you've used hundreds of Dell machines and their teams for consulting and project management. Uh, according to you, how does it help a startup to have a good partner in technology uh, as you execute at scale? Sure. So by the way, I am interacting with you through a Dell machine. Oh, wow. So 
<laughs> Wonderful. Uh, uh, see, the thing is, uh, uh, as a product company, I know there are certain areas where I am really good at, and there are certain areas it's best to work with professionals or people who are good at that uh, space, right? So whether it is uh, hosting or in the case of like uh, machines, right? It makes no sense for us to kind of try to optimize some uh, dollars here and there and try to work with uh, multiple local players. So from day one, we were very clear, maybe because of my earlier experience also, we were very clear that uh, we have to partner with one particular service provider. And uh, obviously, uh, Dell being Dell, like uh, we have enough uh, experience working with them. So it was a no-brainer for us to kind of tie up with them. And so what it does to us is uh, kind of take one particular area out of my mind. I don't need to worry about that aspect. Like this is taken care of, the machines are available to us, the developers are going to be working on it, and I'm not going to hear complaints from them about this. So that is a fantastic uh, thing for us moving forward. And it continues, like we work continuously with Dell on a day-to-day -day basis. And as we grow, obviously our relationship also grows. The power of compounding and awesome partners <laughs> exactly. along the way. As Porpheus grew into a unicorn, Dell became its trusted technology provider alongside its growth during its early times and continued to provide deep involvement to facilitate its long-term strategic vision. Just like Perfios, if you are a startup that needs help reaching your goals and is looking to define new routes for your success, Dell for Startups is the solution. With its core purpose of creating technologies that drive human progress, they help startups in India accelerate their digital journey and solve some of the biggest challenges in the country. Let's head back to Startup Dugout by Dell Technologies to find out more about how we are Govind Rajan keeps Perfio steady through success and challenges alike. In some ways, I do think all founders are evangelizers of what they're building. Sometimes they become evangelizers of the industry they are in. Uh, sometimes um, uh, they go deeper with setting the tone for what is going to come in future. And in some ways, I think that's the founder vision, founder power to see things when they're not, not really there. Uh, and you've been fairly outspoken about evangelizing, uh, evangelization processes, uh, and obviously a lot lot of what Perfios stands for today, uh, in some ways it was already ahead of the curve, you know, and, and we are seeing some of those developments come into play like account aggregators uh, and, and the whole stacks that are getting built around it. Uh, could you walk us through the through your own mind when you started and of course how that has panned out for you? Sure, sure. So this is a very interesting journey and I, I think that's what uh, makes this whole entrepreneurship so appealing. Yes, I know there are a lot of difficulties, but uh, these are the kind of uh, paths that we traverse which makes it uh, absolutely interesting. So when we rolled out and shifted to B2B, uh, that's why I said it's not history. There were a lot of uh, uh, difficult paths that we had to tread there. Uh, so the issue was we were creating a new category. We said we will help lenders to do real-time credit decisioning, leveraging this aggregation platform. And it was not what was being done in the industry at that time. And also, uh, both of uh, the founders in the company, myself and my colleague, uh, we don't come from financial services background. It's not like we knew people there. And as I keep telling my internal induction program employees, uh, before starting Perfuse, the only experience I had in financial services space was maybe opening up a couple of savings bank accounts, nothing more than that. So, so we had to go and pitch to the banks saying, this is a better way of doing things, Mr. Banker, uh, how you can do lending by doing real-time credit decisioning, leveraging this platform. And when they ask us back, uh, tell me what is your background and when I said I don't know anything about banking just short of throwing us out they did everything okay I'm just exaggerating a bit but 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 it was that difficult selling this concept because it's not like we built a product where we could go and say this is cheaper faster better than this product out there in the market we had to actually go and explain what is this product for what is the business pain point that we are trying to solve first of all convince them that it is a business pain point because many of them did not even think that was a business pain point because they were quite comfortable with the way that we're, they were doing things. So we had to convince them and then say, this is the best way to solve that pain point. So if I had to take analogy of a 
elevator pitch when i go and pitch to a vc here this elevator had to be a really really tall elevator for us to go and explain how this uh, whole thing has to work right so it was a very difficult and the only way it uh, worked was i mean as a small company we could not have changed the way the industry worked uh, while we were doing our bit of evangelization going and talking to everyone fortunately a lot of the ecosystem surrounding us also evolved digital transformation became a buzzword fintech became a big thing globally and then uh, to the credit of the government they started pushing lot of things digital india startup india various things so when lot of these financial institutions were looking for a company to partner with even to do pocs uh, we were pretty much the only company around that was doing all of this and evangelization helped because we had met practically every one of them wow so Fast. so it was a tough tough uh, path i can i can totally relate to that and i must confess uh, i'm on a uh, non financial services founder building a neo bank for women right now and i i so relate to this so uh, no but i think a lot of what you've done has set the stage and this brings me to my next question uh, you know the first time i discovered perfios was on the account aggregator website and i know there's a big logo uh, of perfios right. there and i know uh, you've been involved in the whole uh, onboarding journey for nbfcs and banks uh, and you've been involved with the whole uh, data personal data protection uh, right. issues uh, i think uh, what this also points us to is in some ways you were doing all these things ahead of the curve you know a lot of legislation had in come and market changes had in come but you know you you have been at it couple of years before you know things really fell into place what what are the learnings for a startup founder and of course i think regulation follows technology and regulation follows innovation we've all seen that what is your perspective in in founders adapting to external changes and things that they can control and they probably can't control so before we even talk about uh, regulation one of the things that uh, we firmly believed in maybe because of our past experience even on day 1 of any startup it may be just you and your co-founder or just you it is very important to focus on good governance good governance good practices good policies because some of these things are very difficult to retrofit if you go down the path of uh, shortcuts right uh, two years three years down the road whether you are in the middle of a fundraising or whether you are in the middle of getting a license from a regulator that is going to come back to bite you so it is very very important from day one even when you are sitting out of your uh, bedroom and building something it's important to put together good governance practices policies right so that is at a higher level gyan sorry about it <laughs> but in terms of a company as i said we started our life as a personal finance company personal finance management right which meant we were dealing with sensitive personal financial data of end users so from day zero of our existence for us privacy of data and security of data were even more important than even features that we were building i am not again exaggerating whenever we are taking up a feature even today the first question that is asked is is it going to compromise the privacy of data is it going to compromise the security of data if the answer is yes let's figure out a different way of doing things right so it was grilled into people from day one that privacy and security is extremely important because of the nature of the data that we deal with it is sensitive personal financial data so as a result everything that we built whether it is a technology or whether it is the audit process or whether it is a communication to the external world so there is i think one of the reasons why our evangelization also succeeded to an extent because the banks and the financial institution realized that this is not a fly by night company this is not a company that is loose about the data that that they are dealing with they have all this uh, best practices in place technology in place audits have been done so many third party things have happened so to that extent that trust was built right so so when you do all, all these things automatically whether there is a legislation or not you are going to do what is the right thing for your customers what is the right thing for the data that you are handling so when the pdp becomes a legislation it still not become a legislation we are actually involved in lot of those draft papers and uh, feedback and all that stuff so when it becomes a legislation we are all actually future proof the data platform as well as aa all of that stuff is future proof that will be completely compliant with uh, pdp the other thing is when you are playing in a regulatory environment when you are in a regulated industry like uh, finance or health or these areas one thing as they say the only thing that is constant is change right likewise in the regulated industry 
one thing that every entrepreneur knows or has to be prepared for is overnight some things can completely change it can completely change the way you are doing business that you should be prepared to i mean do a complete shift uh, you cannot continue the business also i mean and it has happened in the past uh, in the insurance space it has happened in the sms space it has happened so when we are in this uh, regulated space we are always aware of regulator with a stroke of a pen can change the way that we are doing business we should be prepared to completely pivot and do something else right so once you are prepared with that and you have that mindset any kind of change that happens you will be able to handle it's only when you are not prepared and uh, you read economic times and figure out or oh, something has happened and you don't know how to react that is when all these problems happen whereas most of us i don't know whether it's because of my age uh, we are kind of used to the fact that regulation is going to make uh, something different obviously it's better for the overall society but it may affect the way i'm doing business and i need to be prepared to change mid course amazing i think uh, it's super inspiring to hear you say that and of course anybody building in today's environment knows the change is only getting faster and uh, maybe more rampant and uh, clearly you know when i hear you speak i obviously uh, there's a lot of rootedness there's a lot of groundedness and of course a uh, uh, deep sense of purpose and i'd love to hear a little bit about you know founders make companies and founders make a lot of things i want to understand what makes founders you know so your own personal journey maybe your childhood or things that left an impact on you and then of course some of your you know personal lessons that you think are valuable to all founders out there maybe i fortunate that i did not have a business background i have never been to a business school i have never done a business course and i come from a typical middle class or lower middle class my father was a school teacher so to that extent there was no baggage to carry or expectations to fulfill so that gave me all the freedom to experiment whatever way i want and there was no one uh, kind of benchmarking me against others in the family or whatever so that gave me a lot of freedom i would think so that way it helped uh, but but coming back to this whole uh, other other things of the as a founder right uh, so because of again the experience maybe uh, that i have uh, accumulated over these years i know for sure that there are so many days that there are going to be what is called as very critical things that have happened uh, very very damaging things or things that can change the business right the first one or two times it happens yes you are completely put down you don't know is it the end of the world and uh, you don't know how to react and it definitely brings you down right but as you go through it you realize there are so many of this very critical moments if you look back at it 5 years 10 years back you will now laugh at it saying why did i react so badly at that time why did i even sweat about it uh, it it just passed through and uh, we still survived so now what happens is maybe because of i've gone through so many of those in so many of these ventures uh, whenever yes obviously it's going to happen i know for sure that one mail i read is like from a customer that says you are god's gift to human kind the next mail will say you suck i don't know why you continue to be in business so we go through this emotional roller coaster ride every day and if you are going to react to every one of this you will be permanently admitted in the icu of an hospital there is no way you can uh, manage that right so so as a founder uh, i mean i keep telling my folks also in the company uh, i have come to realize that the ups and downs are going to be there that is what it makes the whole uh, entrepreneur journey also interesting i mean like all of us enjoy roller coaster right right only thing is here you don't know where the ups and where the downs are how long it will continue but having gone through this i know for sure one question i definitely ask every time is what is the worst that can happen yes i see something terrible happening my colleagues are coming in say oh this is a bad thing that has happened so the question i ask them is what is the worst that can happen yeah i lose a customer maybe yeah i may lose the goodwill but is it end of the world can i go back to the customer after 6 months and say we are now better we have improved this process or whatever won't he sign back with us so so that is the worst that can happen it's not like end of the world right so so most of the time again maybe because of my experience or uh, age or whatever you want to call it i have reached a stage where these things don't really affect me that much and i think it's important for entrepreneurs to kind of sensitize to these kind of ups and downs and make sure that you don't lose health because of all this because that is what is going to affect and at the end of it unless you are healthy you are not going to contribute to the company and uh, kind of be a role model for others around you amazing i think what i hear is resilience and playing a long game and not sweating the small stuff uh super inspiring i'm going to ask you one last question which is 
uh, sort of a personal favorite. Clearly, I think we here play the long game. We hear the power of compounding, and we hear the power of relationships. And clearly, uh, you know, here's somebody who's who's done all three. And I'd love to hear uh, how this has panned out for you. And were you cognizant of this when you started? And did it evolve this whole perspective on playing the long game? So I'll be lying if I say it's all planned out. <laughs> Uh, so, so obviously, it all started with the assumption that I want to do something interesting. And uh, that's how it started. And uh, the journey has been very good because we have been continuing to do interesting stuff. And uh, to be truthful, we never expected this to scale up so well. And uh, so as a result, what happens is every time we scale and cross a particular uh, threshold, we need to readjust, recalibrate our expectations and what we do. Because just taking technology as an example, the platform was built maybe for a smaller scale. Now it has reached a scale where I have to apply band-aids and then take it to the next level, right? So likewise, at every stage, uh, we have to recalibrate. But uh, obviously, the good thing is uh, both me, my co-founder and the company, uh, we are not uh, comfortable staying where we are. We think there are huge opportunities. Yes, we have reached this scale. We are happy that we have reached this scale. But there is so much to still climb. And uh, the entire globe is there for the taking for us. And we know that we have the opportunity and the credibility. So I think we will push forward to reach that. Wonderful. Super inspiring to hear you say that. And of course, uh, as a founder, this is very heartening to hear. That was VR Govind Rajan, the co-founder and director of Perfios on Startup Dugout by Dell Technologies. Tune in next week for more insights, stories of overcoming challenges, and of course, never giving up. If you are an entrepreneur that's forging your path with your dreams, Dell for Startups can help you in your digital journey and transformation. For more details, check out the links in the episode description.